We've got to get less wasteful, we've got to get better at what we're doing, we've got to be just generally more effective as an industry in kind of leading the way. Everything that we've been talking about is based on improving the practice of engineering. But now we are introducing bringing the business of engineering onto the platform. When you talk to a factory operators, they want to run their factory at about 90% utilization. And what are they actually running that mission? 62. My name is Jeremy Blum. I'm the director of engineering at Shaper, where we make handheld robotic power tools. My career has taken me to a bunch of different points, but something that I keep returning to is fabrication technologies. Spent a while designing 3D printers at MakerBot. Spent a while at Google X, working on the electronics for Google Glass. Now I work on handheld robotic CNC machines at Shaper. The process through which I communicate manufacturing information and intent to a PCB manufacturer has not kept pace with the tools that I have for designing PCBs. Altium Designer, which is the primary tool I use for designing PCBs, even in just the last six years that I've been at Shaper, the capabilities of that tool have grown immensely. And yet the process through which I ultimately develop a release package and get it to a manufacturer has been completely static through that entire time. So what we end up with now are uh, is really a supply chain that's very brittle and reliant on offshore manufacturing uh, and mostly offline, right? Once it gets out of your digital design environment, it hits phone calls and emails and a lot of meetings that have to be had. Sometimes engineers getting on planes and flying to China to build product so it's a very difficult environment to be truly responsive and agile when you're trying to build new product and, and, and innovate. How many spreadsheets have you guys actually kind of, you know, maybe been sent in the past or other people have received that says underscore new, 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 oh one, <laughs> you know? I, I love the one where it's parentheses one, parentheses one, parentheses one, parentheses one, parentheses one, parentheses one. Parentheses one. By far, the biggest obstacle that I frequently encounter in getting boards done correctly and quickly comes down to communication. What, when we send something to manufacturing today, the, what's the, you know, the very first thing we do? We create a package of data, and that package of data is not in the original format in which we created it, and it gets translated into, into a standard, and there's always something that's lost in that translation. I'm able to generate all this detailed design information, but then ultimately it still just gets distilled into this like 40-year-old format uh, that I send over the fence into a black hole generally to whatever fabricator I happen to be working with for a particular design. And if I'm lucky, maybe they give me some feedback, maybe they don't. Uh, it's hard to keep track of different fabrication houses with different design rules or different things they want you to do differently. They modify files on their own, sometimes with or without telling you. There's a lot of lack of transparency in this process that has enormous room for improvement. So at Macrofab, our mission is to make it easier and faster to produce new designs for electronics. We start with a, a digital-first interface and a network of factories, giving our customers true elasticity in production and a faster connection between their design and their manufacturing. What Macrofab has really built is a cloud manufacturing fabric that software enables the control plane for managing manufacturing across a vast number of factories. When we talk about a network of factories, we're talking about North America. So for a lot of the companies we work with, and potentially many of the, the Altium design engineers out there, being made near shore, closer to where the product is going to be consumed, um, has real value both from an environmental perspective. We're not having to ship stuff from Asia to you know, your office in California but it also improves the speed of communication. I may be the oldest person in the, in the group here, if I'm truthful, and I, can, I was doing, you know, like legitimate engineering um, work back in like the 1980s. Definitely and, the oldest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it's true, but I can remember actually at the time there was this revolutionary idea, they called it concurrent design, and it, it was solving exactly this problem. But the difference is that then we didn't have any kind of a big, digital backplane and th that you could use in order to propagate information. So there was no choice. There's been a lot of talk in the industry about creating a digital thread, the link between 
the design and the manufacturing. With Altium, they've been focused for years on digitizing the design, creating more capabilities to capture more about the design. At Macrofab, we've been focused for years on digitizing the manufacturing side of the business. Uh, so what we're now doing today is connecting those two. So we're in the lab now, and I've released this design up to the Altium 365 cloud. And this is a board that we use in our factory to do some simple motor control for some assembly steps. Now I'm gonna go ahead and send it over to Altimate to get fabricated. So I'll select Altimate here, send it off, and they'll drop me into a flow for getting these boards fabricated. With Altimate, the designer is gonna be able to sit there right in the Altium design tool, and as they're working, the Altimate tool will contact the Macrofab platform and update pricing in real time as they make changes to their design. That means the designer through Altimate will get real-time feedback on the true cost to produce their design and any issues with it that might impact manufacturing or supply chain. You can simply be in your design tool, see the price, see the lead time, and click order now, and know that you're gonna get your product. We are okay with the price, so at this point, it's basically just as easily as saying, here's my credit card, make these boards. I'm really excited about changes in the manufacturing pipeline that will allow me to capture the far more nuanced and detailed design documentation that I already make in Altium Designer and get it to my fabricators and be able to close the loop on that and have that information flow back to me in a meaningful way and get products faster, be more certain that they're gonna work the way I expect them to and that they're actually executing to my design intent. It just makes me way more likely to make more things. I avoid making stuff if I'm going to have to have a ton of back and forth about getting it made. Sometimes I just have an idea, I wanna see it realized in reality, I wanna make it happen as quickly as possible. Altimate has been the most efficient way to make that happen quickly and to get prototypes in my hands. People just expect things to work for them with the minimal amount of investment from a learning curve perspective, this kind of stuff. I think people expect this from engineering software today. Why should it be any different? They want good user experiences. They want to be able to put in the minimal to get the maximum out. They want to spend their time being creative, doing the things that matter, not jumping hoops through a system. So I want to send a prototype out, get it back, know what was wrong with it immediately, if anything, make the changes, and then get it shipped out again to make more of them. If each of those processes to get another version of the prototype back is taking me six months, then you know, you're looking at years and years between products. And we know from looking at the consumer electronics industry at large, that's not realistic anymore, right? Apple is releasing a new phone every year. Now I'm not saying that kind of release cadence makes sense for every company or every product, it certainly doesn't. It does show that the supply chain and manufacturing chain should be capable of supporting that if you are working on a product that does want to move that fast. By having that digital thread of connectivity all the way back to the designer, we've seen products go to market in as fast as you know 60 days that would have taken six months previously. There's that famous Henry Ford quote, or maybe it's misattributed to him, who knows? But someone at some point said, like basically, why are you designing a car? He said, well, if you ask the average person what they want, they would ask for a faster horse, not a car. We can only find out what is next on the precipice of electronics development, product development, whatever, if we implement the tools that let us do those things more efficiently and more quickly. How many startups have failed that potentially had really exciting potential products that could have changed our lives that failed purely because they could not iterate quickly enough on their prototype to sustain against whatever runway they had. You know, one or two of them might be game changers that change the future of the human race. Who knows? Mm -hmm.